Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to be talking about a very serious event that has just occurred in the Black Desert community. So one month ago, on September 11th, I released a video, a week in review, where I talked about how GameNet.ru, the publisher for Black Desert in Russia, was not going to have their contract renewed for publishing Black Desert. Pearl Abyss had decided not to renew their contract to allow GameNet to publish Black Desert, and instead were going to self-publish the game in Russia themselves. So naturally the resulting response was the players wanted to know what was going to happen to their characters and their accounts. Pearl Abyss was naturally quick to jump in and reassure players that all their character and account data would be safe, everything would be migrated over to the new servers, and life would go on as normal. However, today, October 12th, one month later, GameNet and Pearl Abyss have released statements uh, stating that they were not able to come to terms to legally transfer the data from GameNet to Pearl Abyss. As such, none of the character or account data is going to be received by Pearl Abyss, and the servers are going to be restarted completely brand new. Totally fresh, everyone's going to have to restart all over again, make new characters, make new guilds, everything. So naturally, there is an uproar on the forums. Russian players are frantic, they're pissed, no one knows what is going on. At first, everyone was blaming GameNet because Pearl Abyss placed the blame on GameNet. They said that GameNet refused to give them the character and the server data, and that as a result, they could not legally use that data and had to start their own server. So at first, people were all blaming GameNet. They were calling them every name in the book. They were calling for GameNet's head, calling them petty for refusing to give Pearl Abyss the data just because they had canceled their contract. However, GameNet came out with their own statement not long after, in which they alleged that they were perfectly willing to give the data to Pearl Abyss, they were ready to do so, and that Pearl Abyss refused to adhere to the legal standards and requirements required to transfer data in Russia. As a result, GameNet was confused, but uh, was still looking for other avenues to do so, when Pearl Abyss announced that they would just be deleting all the data and starting over afresh. GameNet placed the blame squarely at Pearl Abyss's feet, and as a result, players are a little confused on who to blame. So that is everything we know so far. There's no new news. However, there's a lot of speculation going on in the forums and a lot of stuff that's being dredged up from the past to support the two sides. Now, it seems that ever since Game released their statement, that player opinion has turned against Pearl Abyss instead. And there's a few reasons for this. So from here on out, it's all speculation, but it's speculation with sort of facts behind it and players looking into past data to extrapolate from past events. So to start off with, Pearl Abyss has more gain than GameNet does. Um, GameNet is a publisher. Uh, I believe they do develop some of their own games as well, but for the most part, they publish games in Russia. As a publisher, you are the weaker end in the publisher-developer relationship. Devs do not necessarily need publishers. They can choose to self-publish or just go to another publisher. Publishers, on the other hand, need developers. Without games of their own, they need to rely on publishing other developers' games in order to earn money. If Pearl Abyss was the one at fault, then other publishers would be a little more wary about working with them, but would still have little choice in the matter if they wanted to earn money off of Pearl Abyss's games. If GameNet was at fault, then other developers are going to see them as a bad publisher to work with and choose to self-publish not publish in the region at all, or just go with another publisher. GameNet has a lot more to lose by sort of screwing over Pearl Abyss than Pearl Abyss does by screwing over GameNet. Now, Pearl Abyss also has more to gain because there's a lot that they can gain from making a fresh start server. One of the most popular games that is compared to Black Desert is Arcage. Arcage came out not long before Black Desert did in the West, and has very similar gameplay. It's a sandbox, it's got a lot of sort of do whatever you want. The gameplay itself does have quite a few fairly major differences, but overall the two games are often compared. Arcade shot itself in the foot early on with pay to win. Uh, kind of similar to Black Desert, except much more severely. And recently Arcade released a fresh start server, where everything was a fresh start, uh, pay to win was dialed back just a bit, but still a lot of pay to win, and players did not have to worry about competing with players who had been playing for years. And the result was tons of players flocked to the server and the developers or the publishers made money hand over fist. They were making tons of money from this fresh start server. 
This is essentially what Perl Abyss stands to do by remaking the Russian server. Because all the Russian players that want to continue playing BDO have no choice except to either go to private servers or play BDO on Pearl Abyss's new server, they would be forced to rebuy everything they used to have, pets, weight, inventory, maids, costumes, outfits, anything that they wanted to buy, they would have to buy a fresh instead of just having it because they purchased it before in the game.ru version of the game. Uh, Prolibus stands to make a lot of money by creating a fresh start server, and they're also going to get a lot of news about this controversy. If they had just had a sort of peaceful handing over power, transition of power from GameNet to Pearl Abyss, it would have been like a short paragraph in most gaming news sites. This scandal or controversy is going to make the round around quite a lot of the major MMO news sites and probably some of even the non-MMO gaming sites as well. Players are going to be interested and check out the fresh start as they don't have to compete against players playing for three whole years now as the BDO Russia server started back in October of 2015, so three years ago. Finally, the other big piece of the puzzle is Pearl Abyss has a history of screwing over the publishers for Black Desert. So the biggest uh, event that players can name was fairly recently actually. Uh, two months ago in August, Pearl Abyss pushed for the addition of the Kafras enhancement system to the Western version of the game which players are very happy about. Players had been asking for the Kafras enhancement system for many months now. However, bundled with this enhancement system was the ability to melt costumes and outfits for Cronstones and Valk's Cry. This was something that has existed in the Korean version of the game for years now, but was promised would never come over to North America and EU especially. Players were naturally furious, went in an uproar, lots of players quit, and the game suffered because of it. However, Kakao, the publisher in North America and EU, was the party that took most of the blame here. Kakao was made the scapegoat, and players were furious at Kakao for breaking their promise with the Western audience, not with Pearl Abyss for having it in the game. A community manager made a post that alleged that Kakao was actually being forced to do so by Pearl Abyss. Kakao uh, had at many times tried to stand up to Pearl Abyss, but Pearl Abyss would twist their arm, uh, metaphorically speaking, by withholding key content or new content until Kakao agreed to sort of agree to Pearl Abyss's demands. Until Kakao gave in key content that the Western audience had been demanding, such as new regions, new classes, or even just new items, was withheld until they would agree. This is hardly an isolated incident. There's been other incidents where people that alleged to have worked for Kakao or Pearl Abyss or any of the other publishers have come out and said that Pearl Abyss likes to sort of run roughshod over the publishers and do whatever they want, forcing the publishers to follow along. Pearl Abyss likes to make money and they like to push things to other regions where pay to win is less severe to make lots of money from the other regions. Now, going back to Russia for a second, Russia was already known as one of the most pay to win regions in Black Desert. Uh, the only regions that really compete with Russia for pay to win were the regions where Pearl Abyss already published the game themselves. However, because Russia was so pay to win, that also means Russia has a lot of whales. Russia was where the first full pen account emerged from. The only person in the game to have full pen for a long time was Russian. I'm not even sure if anyone else actually has it yet. And as a result, the Russian whales are used to spending money and lots of it. With the Fresh Start server, Pearl Abyss can tap these whales for themselves and keep all the profits 100% within Pearl Abyss, not having to give any to another publisher. So the incentive is definitely there for Pearl Abyss to screw over GameNet and screw over the Russian player base by restarting the server and refusing to comply with the Russian laws that would have allowed them to get the player and account data from GameNet.ru. So what does this mean for other servers? Well, if your server is already published by Pearl Abyss themselves, if it's already being self-published, like Korea is, it doesn't really mean much at all. Um, life will continue just like normal, just like it was supposed to for the Russian server. Nothing will change. However, for servers where Pearl Abyss does not self-publish, this incident is cause for alarm. Uh, as a Reddit user put it fairly eloquently, if you were the player base of a server where Pearl Abyss does not publish the game themselves, now is the time you should be looking for assurances from Pearl Abyss and from your publisher that either the contract will be renewed 
or the player data is 100% going to be saved and transferred if the contract should be severed or not renewed. Now, obviously, this doesn't really mean too much because, well, the Russian server had the same guarantee. They were guaranteed by Pearlvis that everything would continue as normal. All the player and account data would be transferred over to the brand new server and nothing would really change. So for servers like North American EU, where it's another publisher, this is definitely not a good sign. Now, Kakao is a Korean company, just like Pearlbis is, so it is slightly less likely that Pearlbis would want to screw over another Korean company than a foreign company like GameNet.ru, but like I said earlier, Pearlbis has a history of already screwing over Kakao. Pearlbis is not shy to screw over publishers when it means that they can make more money if the publishers give in to the demands of Pearl Abyss. So, other servers, it's unlikely that Pearl Abyss would pull the same trick twice if Pearl Abyss is behind this, but at the same time, Pearl Abyss is not afraid to do what it takes to make as much money as possible. Uh, definitely not really a combination you want as a gamer playing Black Desert. And really, this situation really sucks for Black Desert players more than a lot of other games, especially Western games. Because games like World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, uh, games that have loot treadmills or games where endgame gear is fairly easy to obtain, are not as susceptible to server wipes as a game like Black Desert. If you wiped my account in World of Warcraft or Guild Wars 2 right now, it would only probably take me about a month or two to get back most of the core stuff that I needed. Yes, I would need to grind for a long time to get back achievements or legacy items, but for the core stuff that allows me to play the game at a high level, that stuff's fairly easy to obtain. Black Desert's a game where the player is much more connected to their account than other games, because you literally need to sink in thousands of hours, both AFK and active, in order to reach high or even somewhat mid-levels of gameplay. If you want to be a high-end player with soft cap or above gear, you need to sink in either a lot of money or a lot of time, and probably quite a bit of both. As a result, losing your account permanently in Black Desert is a much more visceral feeling than it would be to lose your account permanently in a game like WoW, Guild Wars 2, ESO, or other games with sort of more Western philosophies towards grinding. So kind of wrapping up here, this is obviously an absolutely terrible situation for Russian players. I apologize Russian players, this is pro pretty much the worst case scenario beyond the game shutting down forever. Um, losing everything you have, having to restart completely from scratch. On the bright side, you're free, you don't have to worry about playing Black Desert ever again if you don't want to, you've got nothing tied up there now. On the other hand, that sucks. For players from all regions, definitely comment below what you think about this. Uh, do you think GameNet or Pearl Abyss is to blame? What do you think this means for other regions going forward? Do you think Pearl Abyss is going to try to wipe other regions so that they can milk all the whales a second time around? Or do you think this is a, was a one-off event? and that uh, it won't happen going forward. Comment below, tell me what you think. Uh, try to keep the discussion civil, but this is... I did not see this coming. I don't think anyone saw this coming, and wow. Anyways, guys, uh, as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you liked it, and have a good one.